This is three voice material and it's all colloquy, two attorneys and the court. We'll identify and then we'll read at 160 words per minute. I am Ms. Price for the plaintiff. I'm the court. Mr. Wellerstein for defense. The court commences for the record. Well, on that note, we're going to take the lunch in recess, okay? Ma'am, you must return at 1.30. All right, you may step down. Ladies and gentlemen, don't talk about the case. Don't let anybody talk to you about the case. Do not form or express an opinion on the matter. 1.30, courts in recess. We're in defendant and counsel, both counsel are present. Good afternoon, Ms. Price. Your Honor, it came to my attention during Olga's testimony that she disclosed things I hadn't heard before, and I did not receive a witness statement from the defense, and I know for a fact that she was interviewed either by the defense attorney or his investigator because a witness had told me that she had accompanied her over to their office for an interview. There were things that came out that I didn't hear I would have objected to before she said it or even asked my witness about it. For example, the victim wanted more beer, and she gave the defendant $100 to go buy some more beer. Those are things that I would like to know beforehand, so I could have asked the victim about it. And I also could have made an objection before this witness spouted it out on the stand, which would have been hearsay. Is that a motion? Well, I'm asking for sanctions against defense counsel and an instruction to go to the jury that he didn't give me the statement. He just handed me the statement as we walked into court just now because I asked him for it when we broke for lunch. And so your request, the court finds that 1054 point whatever has been violated. Yes. And your request is for which sanctions? that he personally sanctioned and that I get the Calgic instruction to go to the jury that says he didn't give me discovery when he was supposed to give me. And are you going to make a copy of whatever piece of paper you have there in your hand to make a record for the court? Do you want me to give it to your clerk to copy? Well, is that your copy? Yeah, he just handed this to me. I just got this. So if you want to submit it and mark it, I'll have the clerk go make another copy right now. Just for the court, I don't necessarily want the jury to see this copy. No, I'll go ahead and mark it. Like the other things that we had that were admitted on motions but not presented to the jury. I guess it would be People's Exhibit 13. No, let's... Or if you just want to do a court... With anything going to the jury, I hate to use a number like that. Just call it Courts A. Now, Mr. Wellerstein. Good afternoon. Counsel has asked me if there was a written report in regard to this witness's statement, and there wasn't. I did, in fact, interview this witness in my office and took no notes. And I looked in my file to see if I had any notes of this witness's statement, and I did not. Do you have any authority for the proposition that only written reports are required by the penal code? No, no, I'm not trying to use that as an excuse, Your Honor. I'm letting the court know what happened, and then I'll tell you where I am. Um, on my way back to the office, I, I walked back with Mr. Garcia, and I asked him, did you write a report in this regard? And he said, no, I did not. And as I approached my office, I said, you don't have any notes, do you? And he says, I might. I'll go check and see if I have any rough notes. So Mr. Garcia and I went back to his office and we looked through notebook after notebook and we found what's contained there, which is basically a list of brief statements and phone numbers and addresses. And I apologized to the court. And when I realized that I had rough notes from my investigator, I faxed them to counsel immediately at lunch and I called her on the phone and left a message. I ask you again, do you have any authority that the penal code, when it says reports, 
limits it to written reports. Not on me. If I could have some time to research it, Judge, I would. I spent my lunch hour trying to find out if there were any reports of any nature, notes of any type. Here's the way 1054.3 reads. Defendant and his or her attorney shall disclose to the prosecuting attorney, subsection A, the names and addresses of persons, comma, other than the defendant, comma, he or she intends to call as witnesses at the trial, comma, together with any relevant written or recorded statements of those persons, comma, or reports of the statements of those persons. I think a fair inference is that it's specifically directed to oral reports. Mr. Wellerstein, I suggest you come up with some authorities. Can I have some time? I'm going to send the jury home. We'll return tomorrow. Frankly, you know, the whole point of this statute is to avoid sandbagging. I'm sorry, I didn't know. I'll go check. You didn't know that she was going to say there were 60 beers delivered to that house that night? It's the same. Or that the defendant was a falling down drunk every weekend? I didn't. You didn't know that? I didn't finish my sentence, Your Honor. I didn't know that the oral statements of an interview between the attorney and a witness had to be memorialized by the attorney, Your Honor. No, you have made yourself a witness. I talked. That's why, that's why. I don't know what your practice is, but my practice is if I thought I was hearing something I didn't know before, I had somebody else come in. So there was somebody there to memorialize what was said and it didn't put me as the attorney in the position of having to witness those prior statements in the event that they became relevant as consistent or inconsistent statements. So The number of beers, Your Honor, appears in the police report to some extent. It does. Okay. It's not, don't let the tenor of my remarks lead you astray. In the grand scheme of things, this is not devastating evidence or something so surprising that the prosecutor has been irretrievably prejudiced by a failure to disclose but one can certainly see that it puts her in the awkward position of not having questioned witnesses that she would expect to question about these subject matters. And so while it may be a case of small sandbagging, it certainly appears to be sandbagging. The court would like me to be brief and specify the issues as to whether or not oral statements need to be memorialized by the attorney. Is that, I just want to make sure... Have you, before I... Maybe I got a little too excited there and decided to take the recess. Are you prepared to cross-examine Olga at this time, Ms. Price? Yes, I think I can continue to cross-examine her. All right. Now that I have this particular statement. Okay, well, all right. So we'll deal with it later. All right, let's take a five-minute recess, and then we'll summon the jury in. Okay, everybody's here. Would you ask the Olga Torres to step in, please? She's right here. Oh. Premature Alzheimer's. Hope it's premature anyway. All right, please have a seat, ma'am. All right, Mr. Wellerstein, Madam Reporter, if you'd read the last question and answer back, please. Thank you very much for that, Judge.